ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to the westcon engineers limited q4 and fy24 earnings conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded I now hand the conference over to the Dr. Santosh Sundarajan, Group CEO from Westcon Engineers Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all to the learning conference call of the fourth full year and ended sorry, March. Sorry to interrupt, sir. Your voice is breaking. Can you hear me now? Oh no, sir, it's breaking, sir. Hello, is it now? Yeah, so go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I welcome you all to the earnings conference call of Vascon Engineers for the fourth quarter and full year ended March 31st, 2024. Today joining me on call is Mr. Somnath, our CFO, and our investor relations team, Sela Investors. Uh, I hope you have gone through the Q4 and full year results and the presentations uploaded on the stock exchange and the company's website. During the year, our overall revenue remained flat as compared to the previous financial year, which we have already mentioned in our past calls as well, which was largely on account of real estate division where most of the projects were completed in the first half of last year. The new projects are work in progress and expected to contribute in the current fiscal. However, on the EPC front, the execution momentum continued its increased pace with revenue growth of about 9% year-on-year and 14% uh, year-on-year in Q4 FY24. Our outlook for the EPC segment continues to stand strong, backed by a strong order book of 3,365 crores, which is about five times our EPC revenue for the last year. Out of these orders, two thirty crores are external EPC orders, and crores are in about I'm, the so, I'm so sorry, so your voice is breaking again. Should I reconnect you, sir, again? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, sorry for the interruption. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I'll uh, start again from the uh, previous sentence I was talking about. Our outlook for the EPC segment continues to stand strong, uh, backed by a strong order book of 3365 crores, which is five times the uh, current EPC revenue. Out of these orders, rupees 2838 crores are external EPC orders, while the remaining 527 crores are internal. About 80% of these orders are from government projects, ensuring quicker execution and steady cash flows. In terms of order intake, we have one EPC order worth 1,800 crores in this year, which is the highest ever for the company. This comprises of uh, about 200 crores from Bridge & Roof Company India at Kanker Satyukar, about 299 crores from Jharkhand State Building Corporation uh, for a hospital at Kodarma, about order of 514 crores from Bihar Medical Services for a medical college and hospital at Suhal, uh, from PMC for a construction of Moshi, dealing with 357 crores, and also a Cap Gemini order uh, for a construction of an IT park in Chennai of 416 crores. Our bank guarantee limits have increased in the last fiscal, uh, led by our strong balance sheet and financials, and with this, we are looking forward to continuing growth in the EPC uh, division. Coming to the real estate segment, the market is looking promising for us with several of our projects now complete. We are optimistic about our business prospects in the coming years. In addition to our primary real estate business, we are in the process of forming partnerships with A-grade top realtors based in Pune, Mumbai, and Coimbatore. 
aiming to establish a steady stream of new property and project launches in the coming year. Within the real estate sector, we have effectively rolled out one redevelopment project in FY 2024, and we are currently preparing to introduce two additional projects in the coming months. New sales booking in FY24 stood at 1,8578 square feet, with a total sales value of 100 crores and a total collection of 127 crores this year. During FY24, our real estate revenue sale stood at 57 crore and an EBITDA of rupees 21 crores. Cross margin came in at 66%, while EBITDA margin was 36%. We are very optimistic about sustaining the positive movement in the real estate sector, given the promising pipeline of projects ahead. Lastly, coming to the GMP business, GMP continues to deliver improved performance throughout the year, and we expect this momentum to continue in the coming quarters. A revenue of 289 crores in FY24, which is up 15% year-on-year, and a LD gross margin of 28%. The EBITDA was 21 crores and uh, the, with 7% EBITDA margin in FY24. The status on our debt, this fiscal year we have seen our total debt go up because we are involved in new real estate joint ventures and we have put money in Bidmont commitments and earnest money deposits for new EPC orders. As a result, our net debt has risen to 86 crores. Even with this increase, we are committed to carefully, careful financial management and are focused on sustainable growth and creating value. As I've mentioned about the rating upgrade, uh, throughout FY24, I would like to reiterate again that our company, Crystal, has upgraded our credit rating to uh, Crystal Triple B Plus for long term and Crystal A2 for short term facilities. This upgrade has played a crucial role in negotiating favorable interest rates in the company's favor. Uh, we are also hopeful to continue this uh, increase in rating as we go forward this year. Coming to the financial performance of the company in Q4 FY24, let me start with a standalone. During Q4 FY24, the company reported a total income of 241 crores, as against 251 crores in the corresponding quarter last year. EBITDA stood at rupees 26 crores, as against 46 crores in the corresponding quarter last year. The EBITDA margin was at 11 percent, and we reported a net profit of rupees 15 crores in Q4 FY24, as against 41 crores in Q4 FY23. At a consolidated level, the Q4 FY24, the company reported total income of 350 crores, as against 335 crores last year, with a year-on-year 4% growth. The EBITDA stood at 32 crores, with the EBITDA margin was at 9%, against to be 58 crores in Q4 FY23, and the net profit of 17 crores in Q4 FY24, as against 50 crores in Q4 FY23. To summarize our strategic initiatives, uh, at dividing growth, we have made significant progress on our key project. Our strong order backlog, real estate uh, backlog, and solid financial position reinforce our confidence in achieving our goals for the rest of the year. Looking ahead, we remain committed to delivering excellence and creating value for our shareholders, clients, and employees. We are excited about the opportunities in the market, and we are well positioned to capitalize on them with our innovative solutions and dedicated team. With this, we can now open up the flow for question and answers. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask question may press star and 1 on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking the question. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all the participants, we request you to allow two questions. If the participants will have more questions, they can rejoin the queue. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for the moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rishab Shah from Bugle Rock PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Am I audible? So can you speak a little louder, sir? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, now it's back to... Yeah, so I had a few questions. So in case of uh, yes. building management system, there has been quite good growth in the revenues of nearly 15%, but the profitability has taken a big hit. Can you explain what led to it? And secondly, we are seeing commodity prices are skyrocketing. So what impact will it have on the business? Yes, so uh, see, commodity prices 
in in gmp business what happens is it's a very short term turnover business so in the interim short term if there is an increase in commodity prices it definitely directly affects the profit uh and uh, sometimes we get the reverse cycle also where uh, you know depends on the date we have taken the contract on those days uh, if the price drops temporarily for a while also we we gain profit so uh, because they have to execute and finish their contract within a period of you know 2 to 3 months uh, they normally do not have clauses protecting them for these rates okay so but uh, what about the profitability which has taken a big hit so we have been ebitda level for the company has been sort of consistent over the years it's not a major uh, hit as such i would say uh, we are still talking of uh, what is the gmp ebitda yeah so from 25 crores it has come down to 21 crores uh, the ebitda of the company So my second question is the inflation is become is becoming sticky and eventually the cost of labor will also increase and some projects will get delay delayed which is the nature of epc business so how are you preparing for future risk which never gets spoken of in good times but at bad times will it have a very big impact you're right i mean see uh, end of the day you know it's a very entering risk on a daily basis uh, every risk cannot be 100% mitigated you know there is a price which the competition in the market uh, forces us to take jobs at having said that uh, see we focus on government projects where the uh, escalation is factored in based on intent. so in such projects what happens is even most of those projects even the labor index is covered uh, because there is a formula for every uh, rupee that is spent so you know there is a formula to cover for the major materials like steel and cement and then there is a formula to cover for miscellaneous uh, things and there's also a formula to cover for labor so uh, generally uh, we will get covered it get played over a long period and uh, labor prices go up during this period there is a cover that we get in government project uh, in private project for example the capgemini project that we have currently taken uh, we have cover uh, and the subcontracting like the mep work but we do not have a direct cover for labor escalation we are supposed to execute this job within 24 30 months if there is a delay from the client side which leads us to you know prolong this beyond the scheduled contract period i am sure we will have to put it up and negotiate with the client at that time uh, it is not contractually uh, available today uh, but if we finish this within 2 2 and a half we have factored in the kind of escalation we expect in labor during this period Okay, so and my last question is on John Mac in the queue. So, any thoughts on taking only those projects which we have high confidence that will be uh, that they will get completed in less than three years only, or we can avoid which and avoid which take more than three years for completion? No, absolutely. I mean, that is what our endeavor always is by choosing the kind of projects and client. For example, I mean, if you look at our order book that we've taken, we're taking hospitals from the government. Hospitals generally. you know have their funds allocated now these are all in the range of you know 3 400 500 crores so these are not huge projects uh, whereby the government you know initiates these projects without having a full uh, view on the funding they generally set aside the funds for this and then float the tender so we are aware that most of these hello sir your line line is breaking so hello Am I audible? No, it's audible, so. So can you please repeat what you said because your line got. Yeah, sure. So I'm saying uh, we try to choose our client to avoid the risk of uh, a project getting stalled in between. Uh, we, for example, taken hospital projects from government, uh, and these projects are all less than 500 crores. So at this level, we have seen that the government generally doesn't wait for uh, various. meetings to allocate budgets in interim format they generally allocate the entire budget in one meeting and then the project is floated so the, most of the project that we have taken we are aware through our sources internally that the funding is available and uh, therefore they are generally not linked to even political risks or funding risks as their hospital project similarly cap gemini for example uh, you know they are only going to see revenue coming out of this facility when it is completed so when they are finally decided to make a capex on this 
they have definitely set aside the fund uh, they will be in a hurry to finish it uh, and so we do not see any reason why the project should get stalled from their side in terms of funding uh, so we are very careful to try and see the uh, quality of the project or the clientele to you know uh, ensure that hopefully we don't have a project risk of it getting stalled okay thank you so i'll join back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of rano deep singh from mas capital please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, wanted to understand um, and i'm referring to the cap gemini deal that we back for 416 crores uh there are reports which say that almost 500 plus gcps are slated to come to india in the next two years uh from a business development perspective is this a sector that we are targeting and are we approaching this sector where we can set up plug and play offices for some of these gcps coming to india yes 100% so uh, we have been maintaining that you know we want a good mix of private uh, and government we have been a bit too skewed towards government uh, off late which has been good for us uh, but you know at the same time uh, as, as we rightly said you know in good days everything is good we should be prepared with a good diversified uh, portfolio when we approach uh, the next few years and uh, it is our endeavor to you know have at least 30 35% exposure to private uh, if not more maybe a 60 40 mix is our target over the next two years now in private Uh, the best kind of clients we would have is either trusts who are you know again building hospitals or building uh, institutes because again they have their funding in place uh, or industries uh, because again they are you know uh, it's a capex and their uh, revenue will only start after completion or uh, it parks or you know corporate offices like this like we have done for cap gemini and and as you rightly mentioned the mncs and dcs that are going to be putting up in india or uh, data centers these are all projects where you know once a company decides to invest uh, they will be uh, after a back to finish it asap because they are going to earn revenue from it only after it is completed and i think those are the kind of private projects we would want to be focused on uh, and so yes to answer your question uh, we would definitely be looking at this capgemini project to restart our uh, private uh, order book uh, growth sure sure appreciate that uh my next question was uh i think there's a big data center boom happening in india at this juncture right <clears throat> and if i have to marry that point with our land of almost 150 acres that we have uh, and i believe 70 acres is vascon share are we looking at monetizing that land parcel with with any data center project are either we tying up with the uh, project experts or uh, selling the land so what is our thought on the thane land given it 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 the boom period right now for data centers and mumbai happens to be the data center capital of india so uh, see the thane land you know every every possible real estate that you think of uh, will work on that thane land it's not just data centers warehousing can work uh, residential can work uh, you know it's a very good location and so uh, there is no dearth of real estate options to explore on that land Uh, as we've been saying at the current stage there is a separate team that is working on it uh, to see how best we can monetize in bits and pieces how best we can amalgamate uh, we are starting to fence certain areas of that land and uh, you know uh, start trying to generate revenue as i said a good portion of it is also part of the bid or the government is planning to build and so we will have to you know give our land off which is also not a bad deal they will be giving us season you know prices better than the ready right now so all of these things are happening there it's a huge parcel we can do data centers plus residential plus warehousing plus sell some to the government as well uh, but uh, this is again not a very short term thing it's a medium term uh, target for the company to milk the 70 acres that we hold over there so sure. uh, my last question sir <clears throat> i think uh, last 2023 to 24 uh, probably saw the biggest year from from a real estate stock point of view and i, I think there were multiple uh, listed players who came out with record numbers for their residential uh, projects which came out and it sold like hot have we have we missed out on this big rally from the uh, residential perspective i being too focused on the government project epc side and are we are we and what are our plans at least in the near future uh, to kind of galvanize and play a catch up 
So I'll answer in two parts. Uh, have we missed out on this opportunity? Yes, definitely. If we had more projects in hand and if our real estate growth story was, you know, two years ahead of what it is, we would have had a lot more square feet. We've only sold, uh, you know, a lakh and 10,000 square feet last year, which is a very small amount for our brand. And uh, we could have sold a lot more if we had those kind of inventory lined up, which we didn't. So have you missed out? Yes, definitely. Is this because we are focused on government EPC? No, because we have two separate divisions. Uh, the growth of the EPC division is not at the cost of the growth of the uh, real estate division. We have separate bandwidth, separate teams focusing on both of these. Uh, EPC was easier to trigger off over the last three, four years because it's less capital intensive uh, and we have our pre qualifications in place. We've uh, you know, got our bank uh, limit growing and so we've been, it, was, it has been easier to sort of push the EPC story ahead first. The real estate story is a bit capital intensive and it takes time. Gestation periods are there, approval periods are there for these projects. So uh, I would say that we are at a very uh, you know, high level of potential that we are now unleashing on the real estate side, which we will see in the next few years. Uh, so have we missed out on the last year's fantastic real estate numbers that many of our peers have given? Yes. Unfortunately, yes, because we didn't have enough inventory. All right. Appreciate uh, your honest responses and uh, wishing you all the best for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Gandhi from Inox Skills Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much for taking my question. Uh, so in the presentation somewhere, it stated that you have the capability to do 8 million square feet. And right now you're operating at 3.7 and which is at 90% capacity. So can you explain that? I mean, see, uh, I would like to reach... I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Your voice is breaking, sir. So. No, sir, it's not clear. Please reconnect. Hello, am I audible now? Yes. Can I go ahead? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, the last three years, that the capability in terms of uh, top management as well as assets that we hold, uh, our internal company bandwidth to deliver about 1,000 crores of EPC. Uh, and we were doing 300 crores two years ago, then we've jumped to 600, 700 crore level currently. Uh, so, we are performing at 70%. Uh, we will touch 1,000 crores in the coming year, which will be our current potential in terms of uh, capex requirement for asset uh, and uh, senior level bandwidth. After the next year, we will grow. We will have to, I mean, there is no uh, reason why we can't grow beyond that. It is just that we will have to incur certain capex to augment assets. Uh, can we translate this 1,000 crore in million square feet? Or... So yeah, you can uh, see, I mean, you can divide by, I think, 2,000. What happens is, uh, each project of ours is a different scope. Some of them are only the concrete shell scope, which can, you know, work, right. it will be worth about 1,200 rupees a square feet. Oh. Some projects are, like the hospital projects are including all the MEP work, the Capgemini project is including everything. So these oh. projects, you know, even go to 4,000, 5,000 rupees a square feet. So right. the entire spectrum of work that we do can range between 1,000 rupees to 5,000 rupees a square feet in terms of right. EPC. So, so you know, we can do 1,000 crore. Uh, on an average, if you take 2,500 rupees, you know, as the average price per square feet, then you can calculate the square feet potential. So when we say that uh, 3.7 million square feet is under operation, approximately 1,000 crore is under execution at this time, right? Currently, our order backlog is 3,500 crores, no? So, all of that is under execution. Uh, no, I'm referring one slide where it is said that they're currently operating at 3.7 million square feet. Yeah. Uh, just to uh, clear that ambiguity, what you are talking about, probably the, there is a, some kind of annual in the language or some kind of communication understanding. What we are talking about, Whatever the current asset base we are having, we have the equipment, plant, and machine, and all these things. Whatever the current asset base we are having, that is operating at 90% level, which is which translates to close to 3.7. So this asset base is capable of 
doing 4 million square feet per year. So in terms right. of the uh, delivery, uh, but what they are talking about about bandwidth, senior management bandwidth, and other bandwidth is very capable. Let us do double it up. But for that, we need additional capex, additional uh, fixed asset to be infused in the system. So for that, we don't need additional management bandwidth is not required. So that is the communication we want to make it. So obviously there will be good amount of capex will be required to scale up up to 8 million. But with this bandwidth, we, we can scale up up to that level. So okay. that is the point we try to make it. Thank you. But can you tell me the capex amount needs to be spent? Sorry, what will be the capex amount? This year, this year we do not need uh, capex in that sense. Next year, for the additional growth beyond thousand crores, if we are looking to, you know, do 250 crores additional, which would be a target for next year, uh, we would need about uh, you can say about eight to ten percent of that as a capex investment. So about 20 crores would be. Uh, the estimate of capex required next year, not this fiscal year. Not this year. Okay. Now coming to the question on uh, the creating upgrade, uh, what is the likely reduction in uh, interest rate? Is it likely to be 20, 25 bips? And then it will start flowing. Will it start flowing from Q2? It is very difficult to uh, difficult to say because the RBI policy and all this thing it is keeps on swinging ups and downs. So bank is also following the same policy, but currently we are more or less very, very much in the optimal level. I cannot say that we are at the optimal level, but very close to the optimal level what we are operating. But depending upon the banking policy, whether 0.25 basis point ups and downs, it will keep on impacting our uh, uh, cost of capital. But we are not uh, seeing significant drop in the cost of capital, to be very honest with you. Okay. Now, the, the next question is... Uh, is any enhancement in BG limit uh, which will enable us to bid more? Uh, what is the expectation for intake for the current year linked to BG limitation? Yeah, we, are we are significantly done with the BG limit. Sir, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Sir, your voice is breaking. Sir, can you just repeat, please? Can you can you hear me now clearly? I can. Yes. Yeah, Am I? So basically, if you look in last assessment also, our BG limit uh, has been augmented by almost uh, 100 per uh, 100 in consortium. And beyond consortium, for the consortium, we also got a sanction of 200 crore between multiple banking. So uh, okay, we are fairly uh, placed in terms of the BG requirement for next year growth is such that. But yes, uh, we, we are continuing this uh, enhancement within the consortium, outside the consortium. Sometimes it is happening the deal of the Deal is much sweeter in outside consortium rather than being in the consortium. So we are working in tandem, which is a better mix for us. So we are we are opting both the options: enhancement within the consortium and enhancement outside consortium also. So the last question: What is the building pipeline and what is the expected in tech targeted this year? Order. Order. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So for this year. Uh, See, we are currently at 3,500 crore roughly uh, order backlog, and we intend to extinguish about 1,000 crores of that, uh, which will bring us down to 2,500 crore as an order uh, backlog that would remain. And we want to start April 2025 with an order backlog of 4,000 crores. Only that will keep our growth story alive. Uh, so for that, uh, the mathematics says that we have an order booking target of about 1,500 crores uh, by April 2025. And we are confident that we'll be able to achieve that. As Somnath said, the bank guarantee limits for that are more or less in place. So now it is a matter of you know waiting for the elections to pan through and then uh, pick and choose project where we can bid and uh, you know hopefully achieve the target. And with the current cost escalation, anything any impact on uh, order book margin or will it remain above 11, 12 percent as we had initially bid it for? No, the order book margin should remain the same. As I said, you know, most of our escalations are covered for us uh, contractually. So, uh, and uh, whatever little bit is not covered, we have factored into our costing. So, you know, general small inflation, regular inflation should not uh, eat into our order book, into our profitability. So, I think uh, we are safe on that front at this point of time. So, 12 is sustainable. Sorry? 12% is sustainable margin for the yes, current order book. Yes. yes. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Rishabh Shah from Virgar Rock PMS. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I have a question. We had only one launch in FY24, and we seem confident of five launches in the last con call. Can you give in what uh, stages of approval are these five projects? Also, in any project contingent on our raising capital through rights, or they will get launched irrespective of it. Yeah, so we have uh, see two. We have two uh, redevelopments in Santa Cruz. One of them uh, is you know as good as launched, as in we've got the we are at the last stage of getting approvals, so that will get launched officially any time. The second one, uh, the agreement has been registered and we have put in, we are putting in the plans for approval, so that will, you know, take about four five months, uh, and that can also be launched very much in this financial year. The third project in Mumbai is at Povai, which is also in a stage of, you know, uh, where the plans are already in uh, BMC and we are awaiting approval. So once the approvals come, that will also be launched uh, within the next five to six months. So these three projects are, you know, at a stage where definitely we'll be launching uh, the. Other project we talked about in our presentation, which we, is, is a project in Baner, in uh, Pune, which is at a very nascent stage in, in relatively speaking, in that we have not yet put the plans in for approval. We are still closing out the contracts with the uh, landowner. And uh, so that hopefully by the end of the year, the second or fourth quarter of the year, we may be in a position to, you know, launch that project. So any of the projects are contingent on raising capital? So all of these projects, when launched, will need capital. So we had, you know, for Santa Cruz, for the Bombay project, uh, we had done the, we had gone ahead with the QIP uh, requirement in the market, which, which currently is uh, very much, uh, you know, in line, and we should be hopefully doing it in the next few months. But in the meantime, we have, uh, there are other sources of funding, so the project launches will not get uh, stalled if we have to temporarily borrow or if we have to, you know, get. Uh, Private equity, uh, if the QIP is getting delayed, uh, we anyway had our plan A is in place. So the project will get launched. Okay. So, uh, we have a large commercial project tower of future of nearly a million square feet construction. Will we bear the complete construction expense? How will how will be the value of construction? And will we pay for construction from our revenue share? No, so see, uh, there is a partner there who is a profit sharing partner. So all costs will be shared at the company level. So whatever we have given in our presentation would be our share of revenue, and you can expect 30%, 35% easily gross margins on our share of revenue. Okay. And sir, uh, will we pay from the construction from our revenue share, or will be the partner will be paying? As I said, it will all be it will all be partnership. And it's profit sharing. So we will pay for our share of construction. Okay. And so we have seen a large number of residential project launches by large reputed builders across the geographies, but we have not seen residential projects in our order book. Can you share your thoughts out here? Yeah, so we haven't, as I said, we, we in some ways have missed out on the boom of last year. We do not have enough inventory in residential uh, to have sold, uh, but currently we, we have launched the phase three of Coimbatore where we have residential inventory. Uh, cut we, we are finishing the first lot and we will be launching the second part of it and uh, taking that forward. Santa Cruz project and Powai are also residential. So, in fact, only the Paner one, which we just spoke about a million square feet tower of the future, is the only commercial inventory uh, that we will be bringing up in this coming year. The rest are all residential launches. Okay. Okay, so thank you. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. A reminder to all participants, you may press star and one to ask question. I repeat, you may press star and one to ask question. <coughs> the next question is from the line of Kunal Bihani from HVPL. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, sir, I am just looking at the results uh, on a consolidated basis. Uh, the real estate revenue has seen a large drop. So, any specific projections for the current year, FI 24 to 25, in that sense, specifically for real estate? Any projection would help. So, I uh, want to state my account and put the number because I think uh, that's not correct. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Your voice is breaking, sir. 
Can you hear me now? Oh, no, sir. It's a little bit breaking, sir. So. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, I'm there on the line. Uh, Santosh, sir. Oh, the management line got disconnected. I'll connect them. Okay. connected with the management line yes sir go ahead yeah yeah
Okay. Thank you so much, sir, and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rajendra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. All my questions have been answered. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prince Sony, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my question is on the overall business rate. So, as we see, our approximate eighty percent of business comes from the government-led project. So, right? Do you think a change in the current ruling party would impact our Western business? So, uh, I think that's a very tough question to answer. Most of our projects are, you know, uh, slightly smaller than what would be significantly influenced by the party at the center. Uh, we are not of the scale of, you know, say LNT or, you know, at that level. So, most of the projects we take are through uh, agencies or, you know, state governments or uh, various nodal agencies, government departments in the sub-500 range. So, point number one, the project that we already have in hand, we do not expect any uh, any problem for any, uh, any of those projects, no matter what happens with the election. Uh, point number two, going forward, in terms of new projects that is being lined up, I mean, see anybody's uh, guess on, you know, what which government is getting formed and what kind of impetus they want to give to which industry. Uh, but having said all that, I do not think a company of our size uh, will have, you know, significant effects because of uh, what happens at the center. I think our target for the next two, three years will remain intact. I'm sure there'll be enough projects of that kind for us to keep bagging order. Okay, sir. So, sir, my next question is about on the if the real estate segment is growing, like, uh, so is there any plan to uh, go somewhere in Delhi and CR or somewhere as another city? No, no, no. As of now, uh, you know, I mean, we are very cautious on real estate. EPC, we are nomadic. We will go wherever we see a good project coming up. Uh, real estate, uh, at least for the next one year, our target is you know, Mumbai, Coimbatore, Pune, and nowhere else. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishabh Shah from Bugal Rock PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, last two questions are from my side. So one observation we said that we choose uh, QIB versus... A little louder, please. So one observation we said that we choose QIB versus right issue as it will lead to new large investors come into the company and they will start tracking the company. Just a thought, uh, companies which don't raise capital are the most favorable for large reputed investors. If we look at our peer Aluwalia contracts, 25% is owned by mutual funds and 13% by FIIs, and they have not raised capital in the last 10 years. As the company did good large investor did good large investors join the bandwagon, our promoter stake is low. Any thoughts on that side to raise the stakes? So, uh, see, you have to look at the history of the company to, you know, put this question into perspective. Just a peer comparison, unfortunately, doesn't help. Uh, our company was not formed whole and sold by our promoters when it was born. It was never 100% owned by them. It was only 25% owned by them and 75% owned by uh, other angel investors right from the beginning. And so, as we have grown... In fact, that 25% thing by the promoters has now gone, you know, that it went up to 38, gets diluted when we raise capital once in a while. It is in the range of 30 plus. Uh, you know, uh, I do not see how our promoters it will be able to increase their stakes significantly given the company size and the investments required. Uh, you know, it takes money to raise their stakes. And so most of the other companies, what happens is they start with 100% promoter ownership and then those stakes come down and you still have... Uh, a decent promoter ownership. Our company's past history has been different. So if you compare to the peers, our promoter ownership will always look much lower. And I think we are indifferent to that. I don't think that, you know, raises any problem for us to function. We are professional. We have a board. We have a, a proper management. And so the promoter ownership, whatever it is, is not a significant contribution to any of our growth stories or our profitabilities or our endeavor to, uh, you know, pay back to our shareholders. And uh, to to answer your thought also, actually to compare with Alubali is not a PR 
I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. Your voice is breaking, sir. I'm sorry. Hello, Santosha. Hello. Yes, sir. Your voice is breaking, sir. Hello. Santosh, sir. Hello. The management line got disconnected. Sub connected. The management line got connected. Yes, sir, go with your question. No, sir, your voice is still breaking. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, so your voice is breaking again, sir. Hello, Santosh, sir. Hello. Hold on, sir. We'll reconnect you again. Hold on. connected with the management line. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Yeah, so I think uh, Soma's point also was in comparison with Alwalia. He is not in this state and uh, we, you know, need to raise capital a bit more than him uh, because of our real estate vision. EPC generally is less capital intense. Sure, sir. Thank you. And one more last question, sir. So in your portfolio, are there any slow-moving large projects? No moving in terms of EC, uh, no, not really. All our order book at different touch wood is uh, running at full speed. Oh, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. As that was the last question for the day, I now hand the conference over to the Dr. Santosh Sundarajan for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thanks uh, everyone for the interest in the company and the continued faith in the company. Uh, this year we have been flat compared to last year, but we always knew this and we've always been projecting this over the last few quarters. Uh, and we've also always been saying that uh, the coming year, March 25, is going to be again a big year for the company in terms of growth in EPC and real estate. Uh, and we are very for that. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to keep, you know, project much better numbers in the next four quarters. And uh, thank you, and see you all again next quarter. Thank you. On behalf of Vascon Engineers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.